Hello chemists, this is Ms. Placino and today we're going to go over how to do a titration. So I found this in the lab. It is a solution of sodium hydroxide, but somebody did not label it with a molarity. How careless. Fortunately, as chemists, we can figure this out. I'm going to use a 0 0.500 molar solution of hydrochloric acid. And I'm going to measure out a very, very precise and accurate volume using a volumetric pipette. Uh, we don't use these in the modern chemistry class, but if you choose to take the lab class, we definitely will. I'm going to pour some of the acid into a beaker because I would never pipette directly out of a reagent container. And I'm going to use the plunger to fill up the pipette. All right, got it almost perfectly filled, just like with a volumetric flask. You want to get the bottom of the meniscus on the fill line. Look at that. Nicely done. All right, transfer it to an Erlenmeyer flask. Just going to let it drain. And now I know that I'm going to have exactly 25.00 milliliters of hydrochloric acid in that Erlenmeyer flask. All right. So before I can do my titration, I need to add an indicator. An indicator is going to turn colors um, as we reach the equivalence point. You want the endpoint and the equivalence point to match up. Um, now I'm working with a solution of hydrochloric acid and I'm going to use a solution of sodium hydroxide to titrate against it. Uh, so let's think about the strength of the acid and base and maybe we can figure out what the identity is of that indicator that I'm currently holding. Okay, hydrochloric acid, strong or weak? Hopefully you're thinking it is a strong acid. It dissociates 100% in solution. Uh, what about sodium hydroxide, NaOH? Also a strong, uh, well, I guess in this case, base, but it's strong as well. Another one that dissociates 100% when dissolved in an aqueous solution. Um, so if you are to look at, oh, don't have it in front of me, but I think it's table M. There are two different indicators we could use. You could use bromthiamyl blue, or you could use litmus. Uh, more often than not in a titration, we'll pick bromthiamyl blue over litmus. Uh, litmus changes over a very big range. It's great for is this acidic or is this basic, but if you've got a titrate, you're better off going with bromthiamyl blue, which is what we have here. All right, so let's get back to the video. Um, so I'm gonna let my 25 milliliters of acid keep draining. Gotta be patient. Make sure that everything gets in there so you know exactly 25 milliliters and 0.5 molar. That'll allow you to calculate the moles of acid that are present. Great. Um, we always add a couple drops of indicator. You don't want to overdo it. Usually two, three, maybe four drops, more than enough. And in the presence of an acid, it will turn yellow, definitely. Yeah, below seven, so it's going to be yellow. All right, we are going to go ahead and titrate it. So I've got sodium hydroxide of unknown concentration in the burette. And before you do that, you should always let some of the liquid drain out. If you've got air bubbles in there, they can be released. Now you're ready to go. You're going to measure the initial volume of the burette. It's about 1.50 milliliters. All right, get ready to titrate. I always want like the tip of the burette in the Erlenmeyer flask. And now I'm going to let it rip. I'll know that I'm reaching the equivalence point of my titration because I'll also be nearing the end point. In other words, um, I'll be hitting that place where H plus ion concentration equals OH minus ion concentration as the color of the solution is changing. You need to be patient during titrations. And I know that's not necessarily our strong suit but that's okay. We'll keep adding in the base. And as we do that, the pH of the solution is slowly changing. There's a ton of acid in there compared to the base, so the solution is staying pretty yellow. That's gonna take some time. Um, so as the base concentration, uh, sorry, as the base is added, the OH minus and the H plus are joining together to form water, which of course is neutral. So we're not really budging the pH anywhere. We will get to a point where as you add small quantities of base, you're gonna see pretty big changes in pH. And that's how we'll know we're getting close to our endpoint. And we'll start to see the color changing. So if I shut it off and add a little bit, yeah, you can see that it's turning blue. And I'll stir it. And hopefully that blue sticks around for at least 30 seconds and that'll tell me that I've reached my endpoint. 
That's it. I'd record the final volume. Then I have the molarity of the acid, the molarity, sorry, the molarity of the acid, the volume of the acid, and the volume of the base that was used. Looks like about 27.75 milliliters used. Use uh, the H plus MAVA equals OH minus MBVB uh, to figure out the molarity of the base. Um, make sure you're working on some practice problems and hopefully we get a chance to do a titration this school year. All right, talk to you soon.